Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Plasma and I like cobblestone. Today I'm going to revisit another one of my old classics. I call this Reesbleef. So this may look like a regular room, but this is a special floor that self-heals. You can see that it actually self-heals pretty quickly. And so you could use this to make a spleef arena. You could use, turn it off and you could have it as a spleef arena that self-fills. Or you can make a re-spleef where you slow it down and make a spleef arena that slowly heals over time. So let's take a look at how I built it. So down below you can see what you'll need. And this is a basic dissection. So it's going to be 12 rows or columns. We'll call them columns, 12 columns and they're just going to be a pair of pistons. And so what you're going to do is you're going to have an observer on a clock. You can do it like this where you just run some in a circle and I have it turned off. You can actually turn a lever on to stop it. By using a torch, it makes an automatic clock that's consistent. And so if you've ever seen people where they put two repeaters like this and then they try and get it going and then leave it going like this, this is great for a temporary solution but I don't recommend doing this if you want to have a consistent clock. It's actually a bit smarter to do it like this because if you do it like this, then it will always be consistent. It'll always go and it'll always be consistent. So you don't have to worry about restarts. You don't have to worry about it bugging out. This is a much cleaner way to do a regular clock if you're ever going to need to do one and you just need to do one real fast. So bear that in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to have an observer that flickers so that we can cause a piston to go. And if I connect these two sections together, you'll see that what we do is we have three rows of water where we have a water source block lined up with the piston. And then underneath we have lava. And so whenever it gets pushed, the lava will go in and push. Now the speed of lava is 30 game ticks, which is 15 redstone ticks. And so if you set it up like this, where it goes in a circle, where I have four ticks here, four ticks here, two ticks here, and four here. So that's four. I'll do it like this so it's easier to understand. So that's four, eight, 12. And then this makes 14, having two more. And the torch itself is one tick. So that's 15 ticks. And this is the fastest you could possibly make it go. And so if I go through here and go, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, oh, we got to kind of cook it up. You'll see that it, boop. Boop, boop, boop. And then what you do is you make this go 13 blocks. The rule for pushing is 13 because it can push 12 blocks. So this empty space here is going to be 13 when it's able to push. So it's actually going to push 12 blocks down one block, which is 13 blocks. And so make sure when you're counting that you count 13. You're going to have 12 each along the row, but what we'll do is we'll do 13. So now when I enable this, you'll see that we'll be able to have a, a piston. And you can do whatever timing you want on the bottom. A good rule of thumb is if you're not going to sync them up on purpose, if you're not going to make them each 15, you want the bottom to go a little bit on the slower side. If you're just going to kind of guess, this one can go really fast if you want. I could say turn this down. Say we did that. And it would go super fast. And just try and go whenever like that, if you're not trying to optimize or trying to time it right. But then you'll have a self-healing floor once you're done. See? So this is eventually going to push out. All right, so let's go ahead and build one. So I'm going to try and make this as fast and simple as possible. So we're going to need 12 pistons, and then we're going to need to do 12 pistons a second time. So wherever you want to do your spleef arena, or re-spleef, what we'll do is we'll come and we'll put 12 of these in a row. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Did I get enough room? Make sure I'm going the right direction. Yeah, we did. 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And so what you're going to do is take whatever block you want. I'm going to assume you have some cobblestone and are using cobblestone to do it. Because you you're you making a cobblestone generator, so you're going to have more cobblestone than you'll ever know what to do with. So you're going to have 13 blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And that's where you're going to put your piston. 
your 13th block. And what you're going to do is you're going to decide whichever way you want to be visible. Let's say we want the water to be visible. We will put the water, and the water's going to be right here. It's going to take up these three spaces where it bottoms out right here. And we will run along the length of it, like so. So let's go ahead and put our pistons in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we are going to run cobblestone to start it off along the bottom like this. And the reason we do that is because we don't want our water spilling everywhere and being annoying. It's the smartest way to handle the water, in my opinion. And so what we're going to do is we do that. And then what you can do is you can start filling in your water buckets like this. Like that. Now for the lava, the lava is going to be pretty easy. The lava you just set at this height. And the lava will do what lava does and spread. And so you take your 12 buckets of lava. Uh-oh. That was a clean save. I don't have an empty bucket on me. And so in creative mode, it's a little bit of a pain. So what we're going to do... I'm going to put a lava bucket right there. So what we're going to do now is... um. We are going to let's go ahead and start it off. So to kick to kick it off, the easiest way to do it is to run redstone dust on top of them. And so now, whichever side you want to put your uh, observer on, you put your observer so that it's facing something, and then you put your clock down. And I'm going to do a 15 tick clock this time. We're going to have eight here. Two there, four here. That makes 14. And then we're going to feed it into hang on, 12, uh, 12, 13, 14. That's what we'll do. So now, and one of the reasons, I'll show you why I want to do that in a minute, because I actually just showed you how I would ordinarily do it. And I would actually have two separate clocks, but you could also make these alternate so that it's always ready by hooking them up together. And so let's hook these up together. So let's say I wanted to cause this to go. I could actually get a sticky piston and I can actually cause this to fire like this. And the reason that would be cool is because then you could take a slime block you could do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hard to count when they're moving. In fact, I'm not going to do that. So that's two blocks. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I did count correctly. And we're going to put a redstone block right here. And that's going to be neato. because then we can actually time this off of the other one. So if I were to put some redstone dust right here, and then run this along. And you don't even really need a redstone block. Let's say we just did this. Because what we ultimately want to do is send a pulse after that fires. So now we're going to run some redstone dust. And there should be a three block, three tick delay or so. And so this is as fast as it should be able to go. Shouldn't be able to go any faster than that. That's the maximum speed. It's the speed at which lava spreads. And so there you go. So now you've got a couple different ways of doing a self healing floor. I'm going to play with it real quick, see how fast I can get it to heal. And what you would do is you would go around. So if I wanted to do a 24 by 24, like I did over there, you would find your center. Let's say we wanted this to be our center. And we would go and we would count 13 blocks over. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We would put our regular piston right here. And I'm not going to bore you with the process. 
that that would be where that would go and we would build up from there. And then we could come over here and we could do it this way and we would come out and have our last blocks be right here. And we would put um, pistons like this. And then you could hook them up in pairs or wire the redstone up so it's one system. And you could have one lever that controls the whole thing. And then you could pause it if you wanted, if you wanted it to be a regular squeeze like thing. And now it shouldn't heal at all. And then when you're ready for it to heal, you turn it back on again. That's all I got for today. Subscribe if you haven't. Hope you like this video. It's an old one. It's very simple. It's very, but it's a classic that I've done many years ago, and so it's kind of a fun one to revisit, especially for those who are newer to Minecraft. But there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with cobblestone generators that push cobblestone out. This is just one example. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.